the wait is over, Godot 4 just officially released. There is a link to the blog post to read about and download it in the description. This has been a tremendous accomplishment showing a sheer scale and pace that's hard to achieve without open source and such a passionate community. We get Vulkan and OpenGL renderers, a dedicated physics engine, better graphics and VFX, leveled up multiplayer and XR workflows, an upgraded and powerful GDScript 2, and grand improvements on the 3D side. Godot 4 fixes many of the qualms with Godot 3's 3D side, and I really recommend giving the extra dimension with all of Godot 4's features a try. I've been using Godot 4 since it entered alpha in January 2022, and have been using the engine full time since then. I saw the alpha, beta, release candidate, and now release, updating my course Godot for Beginners version to version. I maintained projects, experimented with new features, got used to syntaxes that changed, and even did risky and not recommended things like participating in two game jams. I made a typing game for Ludum 50, and a physics local multiplayer brawler for Ludum Dare 51. This all gave me great opportunities to really get used to the engine as it grew, changed, and matured into the release we have today. Throughout that experience I've learned a lot, so I wanted to take this opportunity to let people who are about to try the engine for the first time know all the features and changes I used more than anything else that have had a lasting impact on the way I make games, and have made me get to the point where I just couldn't imagine going back to Godot 3. Well, I could imagine it, I'd just be sad about it. Callables are the single biggest quality of life change when scripting. I know that seems like a grand claim. Callables seem like a small but meaningful addition at first. First class lambda functions, functions you can pass around like variables. They have been the biggest improvement to my coding quality and ease of production in Godot 4 by a country mile. It's made solving lots of different problems swifter, easier, and more eleganter. Rea. Oh. Eleganter Rea. -ra. There are a bunch of times in Godot 3 where you need to write a function to do exactly one thing. Say you have a button, and when it's pressed, it calls a function. You aren't going to reuse that function, it's for this one task. Well that's just a part of life in Godot 3. You write the function your button calls, you add a ready function, you connect the button pressed signal to that function, and you're done. In Godot 4 we can do better. It's all one step. Connect our button press to the code we would put in our function. No boilerplate, no string references to signals or functions, we just make the button press run the code. And it's all thanks to anonymous lambda functions. This is a powerful improvement, but deceptively slight. Lots and lots of disparate tasks get shorter solutions with less unnecessary lines of code, and you can think about lots of problems in completely new ways. You can pass functions as parameters, say you want to run a function in the middle of another function in a different place. Just pass your first function in as a parameter, and let the other function call it when it needs to. Say you have a tutorial with a bunch of functions that animate steps. You can put all your functions in an array, and use a for loop to iterate over them, and run the functions one at a time. These are many very different problems, and they're all made easier and quicker thanks to callables, and for that I am very thankful. There's an easy way to find what functions have been renamed. As part of maintaining my Godot 4 course, I spend a lot of time supporting people migrating from Godot 3 to Godot 4. One of the first additions I added to my documentation was a big cheat sheet showing what features I used from Godot 3 that had been renamed in Godot 4. But the changes are so grand and sweeping, I kept needing to add new things, because the community was finding more stuff I didn't know about. Well, there's one resource that came in a matter of months ago that's been a lifesaver for this, and that's the built-in Godot 3 to 4 project converter. It does what it says on the tin. It ports your projects from Godot 3 to Godot 4 when you try to open an old project in the new engine. In order to do that job well, it needs to know what every function used to be called and what every function is now called. Perfect, that's what we want. When you're used to it, it's hardly any digging at all, you just search for the function that you remember, and then you find what it maps onto. Here's an example. Picture the scene. I've started a new Godot 4 project, I'm making a 2D side-scroller. I remember that I can limit how fast my player's moving 
using the vector2 clamped function, but when I try to do that I get a scripting error. Well, now I head over to the renames C++ GitHub page, and I search for clamped right away, because I remember that's what it used to be. Well, here it says that it maps onto a new function called limit length, and now I can internalize that and carry on making my game happily knowing to use the vector2 limit length function instead. And if there's much else you're confused about, the official documentation has improved ever such a lot over the last year. The guide for porting Godot 3 projects to 4 projects has fleshed out to a very comprehensive degree. Links to both of those resources are available down below. There was a window of time in Godot 3 when I used an external code editor. This involved getting a syntax plugin for GDScript and needing to swap apps to then test my code changes. I did that all because I'm infatuated by powerful text editing features. They really shape how I write and manage code. I was using VS Code, and my favourite feature is multi caret selection. You don't have to use it for long to understand the sheer power it gives you. The feature boils down to being able to select multiple places in text at once and edit them at the same time. Now any large blocks of redundant code become a bliss to edit. Formatting many lines becomes very, very easy. Say you have a long dictionary, and you want to add new lines after all of the commas. Well, you can just select all of the commas and hit write and then enter. Well, as of Godot 4, multi caret selection and editing are supported out of the box, so I can do all of my favourite things right in Godot. I was sceptical, I spent a long time learning how to write shaders in GDSL, and didn't want to learn graphs. It didn't seem worth learning a new way to do the same thing, but with more and more support for visual shaders being added, they became harder and harder for me to ignore. And now a year into my Godot 4 life, I'm fairly surprised to say graphs are my favourite way to make shaders. The support of capable developers has made the feature leaps and bounds greater than it was, and it can't be understated how helpful it is thinking about visual effects with a visual solution. They're certainly not without flaw, and there are still some problems my brain defaults to understanding with code rather than nodes. Accessing a texture's filter and repeat options springs to mind. But if, like me, you have a lot of experience with written shaders and not visual, do give them a try. You may be as pleasantly surprised as I was. Easily my biggest hurdle using Godot 4 was getting up and running using compute shaders. I was very excited to try the tantalising new tool I'd heard other developers in other engines taking advantage of and had no prior experience with. I'd seen plenty of Sebastian Lake videos and went, oh, I want to do that. So I ended up spending a good month working on getting to grips with and making my first useful compute shader. And it wasn't easy. Using GLSL was a struggle, and I made my f more than my fair share of silly mistakes. The biggest being not assigning starting values for variables I declared. That sounds like a dumb thing to do, and it was, but at the time I set up a bunch of variables, didn't give them a starting value, didn't get an error, didn't get a crash, went, oh that must be fine. It wasn't until much later on when I was recording what was a more or less working Boyd's setup, I started to notice glitches and as the Boyd's would teleport all around and then suddenly disappear. This was a problem that only made itself known when I was recording, because it was assigning those starting values as more or less junk values in memory. And when I was using my recording software, I can only assume it was updating those values in memory very rapidly, and making it very obvious that the start values it was reading from were junk, and that was causing bugs. That lost me a week of my life trying to figure that out. Uh, yeah, so it, it isn't easy. It's a complicated topic, and I really eagerly anticipate more public resources coming out, because I did figure it out, I made useful tools for myself, and I have a more or less capable understanding of how compute shaders work now. But that is easily the hardest thing I encountered, and I think that's worth knowing about when you're getting into an engine. Those were my biggest takeaways from a whole year using Godot 4, and I hope you find that helpful. My course, Godot for Beginners, gives you a whole project in Godot 4 you can try right now, as well as a bunch of extra documentation to help you in the exciting new engine. I still have a lot of work to do despite being in early access for a year. I'm currently finishing up a big written tutorial on making a 3D platformer in Godot 4. There are five chapters available for that right now, and I have three left to do before it's done. 
The course is going to be 50% off over the next two weeks to help as many people as possible dive into the new engine. Alright, there was a bunch of other stuff I wanted to mention, but didn't really have time to do so, so I'll just rattle off some honourable mentions now. Cyclic dependencies being fixed really, really helps you write better code. When working with strong typing, being able to define classes that know about other classes is really, really helpful, and the cyclic dependency made you have to do some unpleasant workarounds in Godot 3. Exporting resources is a huge help. I define resources as data structures all the time. You can define them with class names and export them. This makes it way easier to set up a custom resource in the inspector. It's really great. And the improvements to noise are absolutely massive. You're no longer just limited to open simplex noise when you're creating your visual effects or whatever else you're using noise for. You can use any of the features built in to try and make your noise look closer to wally noise or something else. And it means you can do more of your work before you get started with your shader and you have to do less actual shader work to make your noise look the way you want. All right. I hope you enjoyed Godot 4 as much as I have, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Thank you.